Hi, and welcome to the worship services of Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend, Wisconsin for the weekend of July 4th. I'm Pastor Christy Shoup. This is Pastor David Shoup. And we're so glad that we could take this time to pause and recenter and enjoy this time of worship together. We begin with some thoughts for the day. The first is from Peter Marshall. May we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. From Mark Batterson, worship is forgetting about what's wrong with you and remembering what's right with God. And finally, from John Ortberg, I need to worship because without it, I can forget that I have a big God beside me and live in fear. I need to worship because without it, I can forget his calling and begin to live in a spirit of self-preoccupation. I need to worship because without it, I lose a sense of wonder and gratitude and plod through life with blinders on. I need worship because my natural tendency is towards self-reliance and stubborn independence. We join together in our call to worship. With glad and grateful hearts, with thanksgiving, flowing from sea to shining sea, we gather this day to pray, to give thanks, and to sing songs of praise to God for our lives, for our communities, for our country, for our world, for, for peace. peace. Yeah. 
Let us confess to God and before one another our sins, and especially our unwillingness to change our lives to conform to the ways of your realm. We We confess confess to you, O God, God, and and before before one another, another, that that we we have have sinned. sinned. We We claim claim to be be followers of Jesus and and citizens of your realm, and and yet we often give our allegiance to other ways. We We worship things instead of you, We value greed over generosity. We We claim we know you and that you are love. And then we damn in your name those whom you are saving. Forgive us and renew us so that we may truly be your children. Amen. Our God comes and claims us even when we stray. Receive God's grace and forgiveness and share God's love with all God's people. Our gospel reading this weekend comes from the second chapter of Mark's gospel, beginning at the 23rd verse. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what's not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? How he entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you this day. From God our Creator, from Christ our Savior, and from the Holy Spirit, who fills us and strengthens us and grants us a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. So, over the last few weeks and over the next couple weeks, we will continue to talk about, as as we prepare as Trinity to celebrate our 100th anniversary, to talk about what it really means to be the church. Not just this congregation, but the church of Christ throughout the world. The children of God called to come together and shine with God's love in the world that so desperately needs to see that and to hear the message. And so this Sunday I inherit or this weekend, I inherit the the no-brainer. 
What is one of the most important functions of the church, of a congregation? And it is, no big surprise, to help people have a place to gather together to worship. Worship is the reason churches were made structures. <laughs> this was the place where people came to learn, to grow, to support, to share with one another, to challenge one another, to learn about our faith and our place in God's kingdom. It looks a lot different perhaps than it did 200 years ago. I'm not even a perhaps, I know it does. But uh, you might be surprised that it doesn't look that different from the very general way the church began. The very early church, all the Bible tells us about the early church is that people came together to share the good news, to sing songs, and to pray. There was no set structure or language or, you know, formality or lack of formality that had to be a part of it. It was wide open as long as it provided people that opportunity to come together to remember who they were. And I'm afraid... On this weekend, when we're celebrating our freedom, and when there are so many issues that have people talking about one freedom or another freedom, it's a little awkward that, you know, nobody ever worries about, where's my freedom, you know, to join, to come to church to worship. <laughs> um, if it is, it's, it's in the, the background. It's not one that people lose a lot of sleep over. Um, but it, I think it's because in some ways, we've made a mistake as the church, going back centuries, as the church early on, somehow people made that transition from church being something we get to do, that we're free to do, to suddenly, for whatever reasons the early church had, it is something we have to do. You must be sitting there. You must be at church. It was almost a form of penance. I'm reminded in my early, in one of my, well, in our first call, in one of our first churches, I remember there was a family that had been brought up with that way of looking at church. It was almost like your punishment for everything else you've done through the week. We had people say that the sermons weren't long enough because they didn't make people <laughs> uncomfortable and take too long. I remember there was a young man who was, he might have been 15 or 16 at the time. And in a small town, you know, he was out with his buddies on Saturday night, you know, doing, doing what 16-year-olds do on Saturday nights. And the worship service was at 8. And especially if he happened to come home late, his family made a point of dragging him out of bed in time and saying, you're getting up and you're going to church and you know, you're going <laughs> to get your act together. And the, the poor kid, I would look and I would know it was time to cut the sermon short or try to end it because I felt bad for him because you could just see him in the back going, you know, and then they'd smack him and he'd sit up again. And yeah. By making it a requirement, by in some ways and in some, some places, by saying, if you're not in church, you're going to burn in hell. You know, this is, this is what you're supposed to do or it's a sin and you're going to suffer for it. Um, Suddenly, especially in the ELCA, I've noticed, when you share the grace note, Jesus loves you, you know. Because of Jesus, God forgives you. You're saved, yeah. Suddenly, people hear that and go, oh, good, then I don't have to go to church. 
It reminds me of, you know, the teenager who wants to stay up all night, and it's just great, I get to stay up all night. And if you gave them no bedtime and they stayed up all night for long enough, they would, after that experience, really learn to cherish sleeping. <laughs> because, yeah, you can only go so long. So we get ourselves to worship, and the image I'd like you to take along is the image of one of those glow-in-the-dark stars, or glow-in-the-dark anything, but I like the stars. You know how it is when you hold those glow-in-the-dark stars, you have to, to make them work, you have to hold them up to the sunshine or up to a really bright light for a while, and then you go and you look in a little dark room and you see it and it's glowing really brightly, but the longer it stays away from the light, the dimmer it gets until it finally goes out. The only way to keep it shining is to keep exposing it to that light. As we discuss the church's responsibility to provide a meaningful time of worship, I want you to hold that image in mind because to me, that is what worship is about. It is, we are those glow-in-the-dark stars. We have a great capacity to shine, but we can only go so long without hearing first the message of how much we're forgiven and beloved and where we find our strength. And then, on the, the other hand, hearing that we're also called to do something with it when we go out there. That is what worship is meant to be. Jesus talked about the Sabbath as being made for humankind. We need it. That thought for the day, the last thought for the day, I thought he really hit the nail on the head. Yeah, Without worship... We may be able to trudge along, but we lose that light. We lose that spark. It gets harder and harder to find hope. It gets harder and harder to find a reason to work and to fight for something better and to stand up and think about other people's problems beyond our own everyday agendas. That's what worship is about. That's why in the scriptures, it's a commandment. You know, like all the commandments, God doesn't offer them as a way of saying, you're either going to do this or you're going to burn in hell. God offers the Ten Commandments as a recipe for living a life that is satisfying, fulfilling, that is a gift a blessing to the world around you that is a gift to you that helps you remember that you're more than what is happening to you at work or at school or what somebody said about you on your, on your social media channel. We need to remember that we're so much more than that. And man, getting to do it once a week would be great. I'll be honest with you, I, I could use hearing that message every day. <laughs> I need to. Um, it's so easy to get lost among all the other claims, all the other messages, all the other really frightening and tragic things that are going on around us. And so I'm going to take us back to the scriptures again. So in the scriptures, we have the commandment, commandment that calls us to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because as Jesus says, we need that for our own spiritual, emotional health and well-being. Then we hold next to it, what does worship look like? Well, Worship looks like any space, 
any space that you have or are given or put yourself in where you can learn a little bit more, perhaps, about the Word of God. You can take some time to think about how the beauty of creation and find some gratitude and find some joy, even if you haven't been seeing it before. It's the time where you realize that if something has worn you down, it reminds you of how valuable you are and how much you have a part to play in God's future of saving the world. And then finally, it opens your eyes. It gives you that nudge you need. I remember... Uh, I've heard several times throughout my ministry the saying, I don't know who it's credited to, but that it's a minister's job. And in this sense, I mean, it's all of us are the ministers, but mostly they say it's a minister's job to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Worship gives us that poke, that reminder, my favorite expression, that God loves us just the way we are but loves us so much that God's not going to let us just stay this way. God calls us to grow, to deepen our faith, and worship is the way by which that happens. Now, it doesn't have to look the same. I alluded to it before. The forms of worship have changed drastically over the years. And the opportunities for different kinds of worship exist all around. But if you think of that image from the Bible, right? People gathering together to discuss the gospel, to talk about the scriptures, to talk about God and God's place in our world and God, what God has done in our lives. And then to offer praise for the beautiful things that there are to stand back and remember, a chance to receive the sacraments and be touched. As long as those things are there, everything else is frill. Everything else is what makes the setting better for you. I have been moved in worship services that were in a very traditional church, you know, with a very traditional setting and some of the hymns from my childhood that go way back, I have loved some of those worship services. I have also loved worship services with 12 people around a campfire. I've loved worship services of, you know, 50 kids in a chapel at camp. I've enjoyed worship services with thousands Thousands of youth gathered, gathered together at a youth gathering. None of those are the same experience, but they all offer the opportunity to worship. And they're a blessing. We need to learn to see it that way. Taking one hour out of our lives to step back, from the way everything is going, to step back from our agendas, our to-do lists, the worries that we keep playing over and over in our minds, the opportunity to step back, the freedom to step out and just be with the God of all creation. And remember that we are beloved children and we are part of a call to be so much more that is a gift, and that is a freedom. I do think, however, that we need to remind ourselves of what that hour is all about. It's not about duty. It's not about penance. It's not about keeping things just the way they are because that's the way a worship service has to be. But it's offering us, ourselves and others the opportunity to be quiet and experience God 
and God's grace all around us. It happens in many ways, but I think as adults we need to be a little aware that for definitely for folks my age and older, and probably uh, it goes a little bit further down, too often the church made worship about responsibility and not about health and peace and joy because it is all of those things. I brought with me my, another little visual. This is, I remember when I went through confirmation, we had to fill out what they called sermon notes. Sermon notes, the idea was that you pretty much had to outline whatever the pastor said. And no matter what the sermon was at the end of all the years of confirmation, what we, most of us came away with was, well, obviously the only important part of the worship service is the sermon. As a pastor, I'm happy to tell you that's not the case. <laughs> I'm really happy to tell you that because it's about how God works through the sermon, through the music, through the scripture reading, through the people you happen to be sitting next to. Worship is that opportunity to step back, recenter, and remember. But now, I'd like to share with you, in case you need to rediscover the joy of worship and the worth of being at worship. First of all, I want to give you permission to say, every member of the church, remember we're all those bricks that make up the church, if the worship service isn't working for you to find that center, to find that peace, say something. Worship styles are evolving all the time. But beyond that, know what to look for. We try to do it. For our confirmation folks, we try to give them, this is, this is, these are the questions they're asked. Based on the songs, lessons, and sermon, what do you suppose the point of today's worship was? Then we ask, which part did you like least? Which did you like best? It helps us move forward. It reminds them that there's music. What was the favorite? What's one song you sang today? You know, maybe the lyrics struck you. This week, I can pray for. You know, even if you sit in prayer for an hour during worship, you will find communion with God, a connection with God. How many of us take an hour out to do that during the week? And finally, it encourages them to discuss the worship service, the whole thing, music, prayers. You know, was there a baptism? Was there something else going on? But all of that is what worship is about. It's about all those things that help you find the space to remember not only how much you are beloved as a child of God, there you are, that star again, shining, but how as we leave here, that, that star, we're us are supposed to keep on shining, and when it starts to dim, we need to remember we need to come back and be filled again. So I would say, What's one of the biggest purposes of the church's existence to offer a place to worship is just as important now as it ever was. And it's a freedom that we have to remember. It's an opportunity for us to grow, to rest, and to be God's family. Amen. Find the 
encouraged when we're shrinking, finding scope for faith begun. In the Spirit, let us travel, open to each other's pain. Let our loves and fears unravel, for deepest dreaming there's a time for heart to care in the spirit's lively scheming there is always room to spare with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus let us pray for the church those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, God of all tribes and every nation, on this weekend of cookouts and fireworks, parades and pool parties, help us pause to remember the best of the aspirations and values that formed our nation. We give thanks for those who made great sacrifices for the sake of the principles of equality and freedom life, and the pursuit of happiness. We ask that you please help us cherish and not abuse our blessings of freedom and liberty. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace, please forgive us for the many ways and countless times that we have fallen short of the hopes not only of the founders of the nation, but most importantly, of you. Lord of all, forgive us for not fulfilling the great aims the people who started this country sought to represent to the world. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask that you send your spirit to help us become the people you call us to be. When we rest and play, eat and celebrate, do not let us forget those unable to do likewise. Inspire in us a zeal for the equality in which you create all people, a passion to seek abundant life for all people, a relentless drive to provide liberty for all people, and a pursuit of happiness not only for ourselves and those like us, but for all people. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. On this day, Lord, we pray for all those who are not celebrating, who are suffering, who are the victims of oppression and war, hatred and disease. Lord, we ask that you give them your strength and your comfort and give them the strength to look beyond the darkness of this day to see a light, your light, in their future. And then, Lord, we pray for all those whose names we do know and who we know are in need of your comfort, healing, strength, and peace. We remember especially Tom and Marilyn, Carl and Jay, Dorothy, John, Carrie, Artie, Dan, Dana, Eileen, Catherine, Nicholas, Val, Charles, Stephen, Ben, Margaret, Margie, Ruby, Paula, Betty, Tammy, Evelyn, Calvin, Caden, Mike, Brian, and all those whom we name before you in our hearts. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. May we and our country this weekend truly become a refuge for the tired, the poor, and those yearning to be free. Free from fear, free from poverty, free from oppression, free from exploitation, free from violence, free from war, free from suffering and hopelessness. Lord, may we truly live in to our identity, 
as your children. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will be done done on earth as as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You are free to be the people of God. You are free to risk for love's sake and for life and faith. You are free to celebrate each moment as a gift from God. You are free from fear and slavery to worldly illusions of security. No matter what the future brings, you are safely held in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Let us enter into the song of thanksgiving and freedom. Let us enter into the long line of people in need. Let us enter into the strong mind that God is still living, healing, forgiving. Let us enter in. Let us enter into the place where our God has preceded. Let us enter into the face of the fear and the pain. Let us enter into the grace of the love when it's needed. Death is defeated. Let us enter in. Let us enter into the heart of a world that is broken. Let us enter into the start of a hope we can share. Let us enter into the part where we call one another, sister and brother. Let us enter in. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah.